The man who killed a longtime Rolando veterinarian is set to learn his fate later today. Thanks for being here at 6 a.m. Everyone, I'm Eric Connert and I'm Netta Irampur. So glad you're with us. That sentencing hearing scheduled for 1:30 this afternoon. It all happened at the Boulevard Animal Clinic in June of 2022. CBS 8's Regina Yorita joining us live downtown where the hearing will take place. What do we know about this, Regina? Yeah, good morning, Annetta and Eric. I can tell you that this incident happened two years ago, like you just mentioned, uh, but you can imagine the level of heartache that the family continues to feel. So today they're hoping that they can at least get a sense of peace if justice is served. Now, a sentencing is scheduled for Patrick O'Brien, who pleaded guilty to involuntary manslaughter in the connection with the death of 88-year-old Dr. Kelly. A judge determined last year that there was enough evidence against Patrick O'Brien to move forward with a murder trial. Prosecutors say O'Brien had broken into the Boulevard Animal Clinic in 2022 when Dr. Kelly walked in on him. According to a preliminary hearing testimony, Kelly suffered a head injury from an impact either with the floor or a desk, uh, but the medical examiners could not determine whether he was physically sent to the ground by another person or if he fell on his own. Well, the medical examiners also testified that he died of a heart attack caused by stress. The death is still classified as a homicide. So back out here outside of the courthouse here in downtown uh, that is sentencing is scheduled for later today around 1 p.m. We will get to know a little bit more about this case. Uh, we don't know if the family will be here, but certainly it's been two years. Uh, they're hoping for some justice. Eric Anetta. All right, Regina, thank you. And now in just about four hours at 10 a.m., the former website operator and cameraman for Girls Do Porn is expected to be sentenced in court today. Matthew Wolf pleaded guilty earlier this year to sex trafficking charges along with three of his co-defendants. Wolf tricked hundreds of women and at least one minor to appear in pornographic videos under false pretenses. The website's founder was arrested in 2022 in Spain and still awaits extradition. Also later today, doctors in Chula Vista expected to rally and march onto City Hall to protest the closure of the Scripps Maternity Ward in Chula Vista. Earlier this month, you may remember we reported on this, Scripps announced it's moving its labor and delivery operations in Chula Vista to Hillcrest to alleviate the crowded emergency department in Chula Vista. But many local doctors fear this decision is putting people's safety at risk with Scripps just one of two maternity wards in the entire South Bay. Our sister hospital in San Diego is only 12 miles away, but that's by car without traffic. If you're going on bus, it takes about an hour and a half. Now think about doing that in active labor or with a potentially at-risk pregnancy. Doctors have now written letters asking the California Department of Public Health to investigate Scripps' decision. In a statement you see on your screens here, Scripps told CBS 8 in part, they are committed to maintaining emergency obstetrics services in, Cal in Chula Vista, and they're working on specific operation details for their OB services plan. And now over the past few months, dozens of cars all over San Diego County have been targeted for their wheels. Yeah, authorities say most of these thefts are taking place at night, either in parking lots or along public streets. This morning, CBS 8's Chris Grove working for you with more on which of the types of vehicles are more at risk here and then how we can protect ourselves from this here, Chris. Yeah, good morning, guys. And the one common theme here is the make and model Toyota, generally forerunners, but also some of their trucks as well, too. They'll go ahead and they'll just go ahead and take off the wheel. So when you come out, you'll find instead of your car being propped up on their tires and the wheels, you'll find them on cinder blocks. Now, this has happened at least 25 times across the county. Law enforcement taking a look into this. It's happening in Oceanside, Carlsbad, San Marcos, Escondido, but also down here in San Diego. Now, the thing is that this is something uh, that is pretty easy to stop. In fact, we spoke with the manager at San Diego Tire and Wheel Outlet, and he says one of the best things that you can do is get one of those wheel locks. It only costs about $40. On the flip side of that, if you have your wheel stolen, it could cost you anywhere from $3,500 to $4,000 for a new set. So get that wheel lock. Make sure that you're parked in a well-lit area. Use your garage if you have it. Just try not to leave your vehicle in a place uh, that is not well-lit and that may be far from home. It's safe to do that in case you ever have a puncture and you need to take it off on the side of the road. If you want to be a little more cautious, you could keep it at home, but we would recommend keeping it in the vehicle in a secure spot.
typically your glove box if you're going to lock it. And that's Arturo, the manager that we spoke with, talking about the key to that wheel lock so that, yes, while you have that wheel lock on, you can still just leave that key in your car as long as your car is locked. That's generally going to be a safe thing to do, so that way you don't lose the key to your wheel lock. Now, if you think you know anything about these series of break-ins to, the, uh, excuse me, these thefts, I should say, of the wheels, make sure that you call Crime Stoppers. Eric and Netta. All right, Chris, thanks for that. This morning, the Supreme Court has once again extended a pause on the controversial Texas immigration law. It's SB4. This order came just minutes after the high court self-imposed deadlines yesterday. The law, if allowed to take effect, would let Texas police arrest and prosecute people they suspect cross the border illegally. The Department of Justice argues it's unconstitutional, overstepping federal immigration law. But Texas Governor Greg Abbott says he has the authority to control what comes in and out of Texas. And along our southern border, a battle is brewing this morning over makeshift shelters for migrants. They were built by volunteers around Hakumba Hot Springs as a shelter for migrants waiting to be taken by Border Patrol to a detention facility. Volunteers say the federal government hired a demolition crew to tear them down, and two days later, civilians destroyed them a second time. Each time the shelters are destroyed, volunteers keep rebuilding them and said they will continue to do so for the sake of the migrants. They're in very bad shape. A lot of them tell me that they haven't eaten for days. They, a lot of them don't even have any water. Whether you agree with them coming in or not, I don't think anyone can agree that it's a good idea to put them through all of this. So we reached out to Border Patrol and the San Diego County Sheriff's Office for comment. We have not heard back yet. This morning, some relief for migrant women in Chula Vista. A new shelter just opened its doors. The organization is called we all we got SD. They partnered up with a local church to offer migrant women and their children food, clothes and a safe place to spend the night. We just want to have safety and we just want to have some um, security for people and some comfort. Now she's one of the volunteers. We've been asked not to disclose the specific location of the shelter for these migrant women's safety. The women's shelter is donation based. Everything provided to the migrants given by the community. Taking a peek outside here. It is the uh, last day of winter mm -hmm. and then spring yeah. actually begins tonight, right? Yeah, 806 yes. tonight. Yes. Okay, yeah, good. So tomorrow will be the first full official day of spring. All right, we made it. Excited. Yeah, but I think Mother Nature got the memo a little early because today <laughs> is expected to be nice. The hillsides are beautiful in San Diego. So yeah, it feels very much like spring already. Uh, let's take a live look outside. It's a little dark out there, but we do know uh, that the skies are mostly clear this morning after we saw some rain pop up yesterday afternoon. We could see some intermittent showers out in the mountains today that could linger into tomorrow as well. Uh, they will be brief if they do pop up. Warmer, drier weather expected for the mid part of this week. That trend will continue through Friday and then we have cooler, wet and breezier conditions coming this weekend. We're going to see temperatures shift anywhere from 10 to 20 degrees from being on the warmer side to being rather chilly by this weekend. Right now, mostly clear skies throughout San Diego. If we uh, push this forward Tuesday in the afternoon, we start to see some clouds build over the mountains and you could see some pop up showers again uh, this afternoon as well as tomorrow afternoon. What you are going to notice along the coast is we're going to see that marine layer really start to build in the morning and evening hours as we get closer to the weekend ahead of this storm. We could get some moisture out of that marine layer as a uh, coast Coastal Eddy has set up shop for tonight as well as tomorrow. So this pattern will continue through Friday and then we will start to see more widespread coverage of uh, the clouds as that storm gets a little closer. As far as current temperatures along the beaches, we're in the low 50s. Inland Valley is good morning Escondido, 45 to you, 38 in Ramona, 44 in El Cajon. We're about in the mid 40s out in the mountains. Low pressure system bringing us those pop up showers out in the mountains. High pressure system just behind it bringing us some warm, drier conditions for the mid part of this week temperatures right around the seasonal average and then low pressure system moving in this weekend. The best chance for rain is going to be late Saturday night into Sunday and then that is going to continue through about Monday morning before we start to see the residual slowing. Let's take a look at traffic for those of you getting ready to walk out the door. A couple of trouble spots this morning. The 805 heading northbound now starting to look sluggish from the 94. This is going to continue up to about the 52. Also, there is a crash on the 15 heading southbound at the 78. It's been moved over to the center divide. 
side, but traffic is extremely slow all the way back to Gopher Canyon. So please give yourself some extra time if you're going to be traveling on that 15, especially through Escondido. You finally get some relief once you get past Via Rancho Parkway. Okay, here's a look at the border wait times from the CBP website. It's 90 minutes for the general line at the San Ysidro Port of Entry, and then it's going to be 75 minutes for the general line at the Otay Mesa Port of Entry. Guys? Carrie, thank you very much. Coming up next, is it Kate or a doppelganger? The ongoing conspiracy surrounding a new video allegedly released of the Princess of Wales. Plus, on the brink of starvation here, the widespread food insecurity faced by millions in Gaza. And the first of its kind in the U.S., where you can now buy birth control without a prescription. Stay with us. We'll be right back.